Hey everybody, it's Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Welcome to my channel if you're here for the first time. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and the bell. Choose all to be notified by YouTube every time I upload a new video. If this is not your first time, welcome back. I am here today with two porch or patio decor DIYs for you. This is probably the first in a series because I am needing to do some work on our patio here at our parsonage. I'm gonna show you here a clip in just a second of what the patio looks like now so that you can see what I am starting with as I create some DIYs and just do some home improvement DIYs out here to make our patio a little more user friendly. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you soon. So this is coming out of our slider doors out into the back area of our yard. You can see we have some woods back here. And over to the right we have, that is the garage for the church. And then a little shed over there. We have a nice little fire pit area there, which I'm sure you'll be seeing this summer. So. On our patio, it's pretty much just a concrete slab. There is no roof over it. We do have some metal patio furniture here. The cushions just haven't been brought out yet. Um, it's a nice brick wall. We have some old wood lattice work here with a couple wind chimes hanging on it. And then let me slowly turn over to the other side here not a whole lot just um, the air conditioner and then some more foliage there a pole to put like a dog's leash on so I'm very excited to share my first two DIYs with you today and for you to just come on this little patio renovation um, adventure with me and we'll see what we end up with at the end of this series let's get into today's DIYs For today's first project, I'm using six packs of the five gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's. I'm using truffle and white Waverly chalk paint, six of the mini chalkboards from Dollar Tree, some jute twine, these rectangular planks that I got at Walmart, you can get at Dollar Tree now, and some poster letters. So these packs, I said I used six, they have three sticks per pack. They are 90 cents each at Lowe's. I found that the ones at my Walmart now are kind of rounded on the edges, so I really like these ones from Lowe's. They are cheaper because my Walmart increased the price. But anyway, I'm going to use six packs or 18 of these large five gallon paint stir sticks, and I'm going to paint them with white Waverly chalk paint. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to lay them out kind of like a picket fence. So I'm not cutting the indented part off, I'm leaving that um, as part of the fence. So I'm actually going to take 14 of the sticks, I'm just eyeballing how far to space them out. And then the other four I'm going to use for the back to attach the entire thing together. And here you can see how I laid those four out on the back. And then I also decided to use some scrap pieces I had just to make sure um, it was secure enough with those back braces going all the way across. So once I wood glued all that together and that glue dried, I did go ahead and paint 
in all those little spaces. I should have just painted those pieces at the beginning, but I guess I saved a little bit of paint this way, just so that everything will look nice and white. And here's my picket fence completely painted. Next, I'm taking some of my elephant gray chalk paint. Originally, I was going to use truffle, but I decided to go with the dark gray instead. And if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me use this dry brush technique before. I dab this very rough brush into a little bit of paint, dab it onto a paper towel, and then very lightly do these streaks however you want, however much or however little you want on each of the picket fence pieces. You'll also see that I'm doing just a little bit uh, in between in those little spaces where you can see the back brace pieces. And here's the fence with the rustic dry brushing. Now I'm taking three of these rectangular wood plank pieces. I got mine at Walmart in the craft section. I have seen that the Dollar Trees that are now carrying the new Crafter Square um, more extended craft section does have these rectangular wood pieces. I'm using three of them. I'm using that same elephant gray chalk paint and then I'm going to dry brush some white just to give it that weathered wood look and give it some more texture and dimension. So I'll do that to all three of my rectangular wood pieces. Next, I'm taking some of the black poster sticker letters that you can get from Dollar Tree, and on my three pieces of wood, I'm going to spell out our patio rules. For that second sign, you could change it to porch if you and your family more hang out on the porch of your house. But for us, we don't really hang out on the front porch because it's on a major road and it's kind of loud. So I decided to make this decor piece for the patio. Using some matte finish Mod Podge from Dollar Tree, I am going to just do a light coat of it over my stickers just to make sure that they stay attached and don't peel off. And here's what they looked like once the Mod Podge was dry. Now I'm taking six of these chalkboards from Dollar Tree. I'm going to first use a pencil and then one of my Elmer's painters markers from Walmart. And I compiled some ideas that I had found on Pinterest. There are many more than six that you could add to this, but six uh, little rules is about all I could fit on this sign. So here I'm just going to write them out in pencil in just some different fonts, some different handwriting styles, and then once I like how they look, then I will go back and trace over them with my white paint marker.
So here's what they look like, just going over them once with the paint marker and then going over them again just to make the letters bolder and stand out more. The last thing I'm going to do is just attach these chalkboards to the fence and the three signs at the top. I'm using a combination of my Fix All adhesive from Dollar Tree and my Gorilla Hot Glue and just making sure everything is secure because this will be outside on our patio wall. Once everything was secured and dried, I did take this out to the garage and spray it front and back with a glossy clear coat just to help protect it a little bit from the weather. Next, I'm taking my thick jute twine from Walmart and doing a double, a double strand of it as a hanger on the back. And actually, once I take this outside and hang it on a screw that is already in the wall, I did not end up needing the string, but at least I have it in case I do end up moving this piece and need to hang it um, on something else. So the screw is actually going to just poke through two of the picket fence slats, which you'll see in a moment. So here is our finished product, our patio rules sign hanging on our back patio. And it's just the first step in our patio renovation. For my second DIY today, I'm using a couple Easter signs, some tumbling tower blocks, this metal watering can from Target Dollar Spot, a faucet from Lowe's and some florals. The first thing I'm going to do with this Some Bunny Loves You sign is remove the string. I had already used the metal pieces for a different DIY. I'm going to take some of this lightweight spackle. This stuff's amazing if you guys have never used this before from Dollar Tree. I don't know if I'm supposed to use my finger, but that's just what I do. I just push some down into the hole and then smooth it out. You can use a scraper to scrape the extra and then it fills in those holes perfectly so you can't see them. Next, I'm giving my sign and I'm going to give this box sign once I get the paper off the front, both of them a nice coat of white Waverly chalk paint for the base color for today's project. Once the paint is dry, I'm taking a yardstick and a black Sharpie and just redrawing those palette wood lines for my back sign. Then once I've removed the sawtooth hanger from the small square sign, I'm going to figure out how to best line this up. This is going to be kind of like a little shelf with a back. So because the bottom of the the back sign is not completely straight, I am just lining up my square sign to the longer piece. So once I show the back, you will see that there's a little bit of a gap. I am using this edging again. You've seen me use this before. Um, I have some left over and it just gives such a nice um, support and also a finished touch where you've kind of secured two pieces together. So I cut a piece just to fit there. It's the same width as my square sign also giving it a coat of white chalk paint. And then once it's dry, I'm going to hot glue it there right where my back sign and my small square sign meet each other. Here I'm showing you where I took three brown tumbling tower blocks and then three of the natural colored ones just to support the back 
of my sign at the bottom. Next I'm going to take some mineral chalk paint and again using my favorite dry brushing technique, just adding some texture and dimension to the back of my sign, make it look a little bit more like old weathered palette wood and just using this light gray mineral. Now I purchased this faucet nozzle at Lowe's. It was about $6. I'm here, I'm just going to trace around it to then cut a hole. Um, I did use my Dollar Tree utility knife and it did take a little bit just to kind of go around and score, trying to go around in the circle, but I was eventually able to get through it. I don't have a drill or anything like that, but this sign is like that particle board, cardboard, so um, I was able to get through it with the utility knife. So once I had the circle out, I just took the faucet nozzle and it is threaded. So once I um, got some of the pieces off to make sure it would fit and got it in there flat, I was able to just screw it in by twisting it to the right. I did not glue this in in case I wanna take it out and use it for a different project, but I was able to twist it in all the way flat to the back. There you can see it sticking out the back a little bit. Next, I took 29 of the tumbling tower blocks um, and I just gave each one a coat of the ink black Waverly chalk paint, just one coat, on all of the sides and then let those dry completely. Next, I'm going to take, I believe it's nine of them to go across the front of my square sign base. So I'm kind of making it look like a fence a little bit, like a picket fence. So nine go across the front and then I'll do 10 on each side. I purchased this watering can for $3 in the Target dollar spot last spring, but you can find watering cans all over. Um, I did want to go ahead and spray it with my gunmetal gray spray paint, gave it a nice base color. Then taking just a pom-pom, I'm first dipping it in some mineral chalk paint, and I'm doing this just to kind of give it more of a texture and more of a galvanized metal look look. So I'm going to do the light gray, the mineral chalk paint first, and then a couple other colors just to give it that multi-color dimension. Looks like here we're using white next, just using a different pom-pom and going all over the top, the handle, and all over the sides of my watering can. Of course, this step is completely optional. If you'd rather just spray it the solid color or even leave it the color that it was, that is completely up to you. I just wanted to try some of these other techniques and see what other interest I could add to my piece. And lastly, I'm taking that elephant gray, which is closest to the spray paint that I originally sprayed the can, just to blend in those other two colors a little bit more and give those final touches to my watering can.
Next, I'm taking a pencil and then my white paint marker that I used earlier, and I'm just free writing the word bloom on my watering can. And then, like I said, going back over it with my white paint marker from Walmart. And here is the word completely finished. Our last step for our project is just to add some greenery or some florals. So that's all I'm doing here as a final step. Um, still feel free to use whatever you have on hand. I just had a variety of ferns and I think that's called spider grass maybe, and then just some white flowers. So that is the finishing touch to this project and here's how it turned out. Thanks again so much for joining me today on my channel. I hope you enjoyed these two patio decor DIYs and I hope you will come back soon to see what else I do for decorating my patio. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.